This week, President Biden, with the stroke of a pen, created one of the largest entitlement programs in U.S. history in an effort to court younger voters in 2022 and fulfill a key part of the Biden-Sanders agenda released in 2020. Page 81, in case you're interested. The plan itself cancels 10000 for borrowers making under $125,000. I'm not sure where he came up with that. Uh, and 20000 canceled for Pell Grant recipients. And he's also extending the payment freeze until December the 31st. More free stuff, but is it legal? And what are the implications for the economy, inflation, and the cost of college? According to the Wharton budget model, the $300 billion this will allegedly cost could come out to, with interest, nearly a trillion dollars paid off over 10 years. Earlier, I spoke with former senior economic policy advisor to President Trump and Heritage Foundation senior fellow economist Stephen Moore to get his thoughts on what some are calling a massive abuse of presidential power. Watch. The cost of this is just exploding. <laughs> just in the last few days, the numbers keep escalating about what this is going to cost. Don't forget, just three weeks earlier, they passed a, another, uh, you know, half trillion dollar spending bill. This brings the, if they, they were to enact this into law, you're talking about four trillion dollars of spending and debt and money printing by Biden. So we've never had a president in the history of this country who's been so fiscally irresponsible. Um, I think the reason there's such a huge backlash against this this bill, and this, by the way, it's not really a bill, it's an executive order by the president, um, is that people view it as fundamentally unfair, un right. un-American, and it's not fair to the people who played by the rules and repaid their loans. Um, and it, it's only going to incentivize more people to not pay their student loans in the future. So, in fact, I, I believe that if they move forward with this plan, it will be the death of the student loan program, because why would anybody ever repay their debt if the government's going to write it off? Yeah. You know, the Wall Street Journal had this scathing op-ed the other day where they really called it what it is, Stephen. They said, quote, like other great society programs, federal student loans and grants were initially aimed at helping low-income mm -hmm. Americans. They have since become another all-you-can-eat entitlement. So in other words... It, this debt relief is really just a massive giveaway to academia on one side and an yes. expansion of America's dependent class. The cost of college has increased ninefold since 1980. Yes. So how does this really solve uh, a crisis of college costs and debt really in the country? It worsens it. And you're so right. There's a direct connection between how much money we poured into these uh, universities through the loan programs and direct aid and subsidies to universities. The more we subsidize them with government money, guess what? The more they raise the the tuition rates. You're right that the tuitions have risen three times the rate of inflation over the last 30 years. When I went to the University of Illinois, I paid, paid uh, that was back in the early mid 1980s. I was paying $1,200 a semester. Now it's $15,000 a semester. I mean, think about how much these things, the burden this is placing in the middle class. So the point is that yeah. all these government subsidy programs are not making college more affordable. They're making it less affordable. Yeah, and, and Stephen, the unemployment rate for college graduates in this country is about 2%. So there's, yeah. there's no compelling economic rationale for this either, right? In fact, it's, it's incredibly economically unfair because half of the workers in the American economy never went to college. Now they right. have to pay taxes to, for the people who did go to college uh, and aren't repaying their loans. So it's a Robin Hood and reverse policy. I, I th I'll make one other quick point. You raised the question of whether this is legal. Now, I'm not a constitutional scholar, but I've got to tell you this. They are using the COVID emergency rules to give the president the power to do this. COVID ended a year ago. What are they talking about? This isn't a COVID emergency. It's just Biden giving away money to his friends in academia and to people who, frankly, should be repaying their debts and are not. Yeah, you know, it's a great point, Stephen. I, I want to play this clip of Nancy Pelosi from back in July of last year, just last year, when she was asked about Biden forgiving student loan debt. Take a listen. People think that the president of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He can postpone. He can delay. But he does not have that power. That would that has to be an act of Congress. 
Now, of course, she's looking at losing her majority in the House. She flip-flopped this week. She said, quote, President Biden's bold action is a strong step in Democrats' fight to expand access to higher education and empower every American to reach fulfillment, whatever, uh, whatever that's supposed to mean. Biden once questioned himself whether or not he actually had the power to do this. So, so is, do you think that this actually will happen? Um, or do you think that there's a way to stop it? Uh, it will the Supreme Court get involved ultimately uh, with this? Well, I, again, I'm not a constitutional lawyer, but I do think that there's a very strong case that could be made that this is an illegal um, power grab by the president. Imagine, by the way, if Donald Trump tried to do something like this, they'd call him a dictator. So right. uh, the president doesn't have this authority. The, the first uh, the uh, first clause of our Constitution gives the power of the purse to, to Congress. But there, so there's so many reasons to oppose this. I actually think that uh, that uh, Joe Biden has laid an egg here. I think it's not politically popular. It's not in the interests of our country's uh, fiscal future. And let's just pray that we can stop this from ever happening. And one last question for you, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are asking, if this were to happen, does this increase inflation and worsen the economy. Yeah, sure does, because it's more debt, it's more spending, and it also incentivizes universities to even continue to raise their tuitions. We're going to be talking about tuitions of $100,000 a year at major colleges. And we'll all be on the hook for it. Yeah. Economist yeah. Stephen Moore, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us.